Good morning, everybody. Very warm welcome to St. Andrews this morning. Um, and a warm welcome, whether you've been coming to church for years or whether this is your first Sunday with us, you're really welcome. And it's lovely to see you. This morning we have Sunday Club. So um, after we've sung our first group of songs, the children, those primary school, those who are at primary school age, uh, will be going into the halls. No, into the Welcome Centre this morning. So they'll be going that way. Um, for their Sunday club session. And if you're preschool age, then there is pray and play in the back room. So that's for those children who aren't quite old enough yet to go to school. That's happening in in the room at the back. And um, we've got some sofas at the back for our secondary school age folk if they want to join in with stuff that's happening there. A couple of notices before our opening prayer. One is to say that on Wednesday the 1st of June... We are celebrating the uh, golden jubilee, no, the platinum jubilee. Need to get my, uh, my metals correct. The platinum jubilee. Uh, the Plus Group and the Mothers' Union are joining forces to have a special um, high tea and celebration. So it's going to be 10.30 a.m. till 2 p.m. on Wednesday, the 1st of June. Um, so plus is for those who are 60 plus. And if you'd like to join in that day, but you don't regularly go to that group, there's a sign-up sheet at the back just so that they know how many they need to cater for for that celebration. On uh, the Sunday, which is also Pentecost Sunday, as well as being Platinum Jubilee Sunday, we're having our normal services on on that morning, Pentecost services, and then we're going to have lunch together. If it's good weather, we're going to have lunch out there on Belmont Field, so please do bring a picnic. Um, If it's not good weather, we'll probably retreat in here and have our picnic in here. But uh, that's for Pentecost Sunday and Platinum Jubilee Sunday, which is all happening on the same day. Please do join us for that. This evening at 7 p.m., we're having an evening of worship and prayer here in church. So do please come along to that if you're free and able to, 7 p.m. tonight. So we're now going to sing, uh, we're now going to pray as we, uh, as we prepare to worship this morning. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you that we can gather together this morning, whether we're here in person or whether we're watching online. And as we do, we're also aware that there are churches and gatherings and people gathering throughout the country and throughout the world who are gathering together to to sing songs like the ones we're singing and to pray and to receive communion like we'll be doing together this morning. And we thank you that we are part of that communion, part of that worldwide fellowship of people who love you and who worship you. And so we want to do that, Lord. We pray that by your spirit, You will help us to worship in spirit and in truth, knowing that it doesn't matter where we gather, as long as our hearts and our minds are focused on you. Lord, help us worship in spirit and truth this morning, in Jesus' name. Amen. If you're able to, would you like to stand? Come rest on us, come rest on us. 
upon us Fire and wind come and do it again Open up the gates, let heaven come in Come rest on us Come rest on us Fire and wind come and do it again Rest on us, come rest on us, come down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you fill the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will fill me. Come down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you fill the room, you're here and Fill me.
God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God, and if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? What can stand against? Our God is greater. God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God, our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God, our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome in power, our God. Please be seated. Lord, as we have sung your praises of your awesome power, we come to recognize our shortcomings and we come humbly before you to confess our sins. For Christ, our Passover lamb has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. We pray together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us, pardon and deliver us from our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So the children, uh, primary school age children, are going to now go through that way with Mary and Charlotte for Sunday Club, and uh, if you're any preschool children are going to go through to the back for pray and play. And as they do that, this is a bit of movement, we will pray for all the people of all the different ages as we continue with our service. Lord, we thank you for the diversity of ages that we have in our church. And we pray this morning as some of us are in separate rooms, we will nonetheless be united in learning more about you, in hearing from you, and in being your community, your body of people. 
In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I'm now going to invite Helen to come forward and bring this morning's reading. Well, it couldn't be easier to find if you're going to use a real Bible. Remember these old-fashioned paper things? Um, Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 to 2, and then chapter 2, verses 1 to 3, and verse 15. So chapter 1, first two verses of the Bible. I bet you all know it off by heart. In the beginning... God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing, So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it, he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So Daphne's going to come and speak to us this morning. As she does, I'm going to pray for her. Lord God, we thank you for your word. And we want to know you better through reading it and hearing it and exploring it and taking it into our lives. And so we pray that as Daphne speaks to us this morning, that we will hear what you have to say, that it will go deep into our hearts and it will affect how we live. Shape us through your word, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. We're coming um, this morning to continue our theme of being renewed, renewing strength, following on from the Scargill weekend just a couple of weekends ago for those people who were there and for the rest of the church family to be included in this renewing of strength which we so need I think at the moment so I'll just remind you of those verses from Isaiah he gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak even youths grow tired and weary and young people stumble and fall but those who hope in the Lord or those who wait on the Lord some versions have it will renew their strength They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. For a couple of years before I moved back to this area, I was serving at a church in uh, quite a needy part of Hull. And in the church congregation, there was a lovely man called Jack. And whenever the state of the world was being discussed or the terrible things that are going on, everywhere he would always come out with the same line it all goes back to the garden and it's true isn't it this weariness this need for our strength to be renewed the mess that the world is in that many people's lives are in the brokenness of the world it all goes back to the garden of eden So today we're going to go right back to Genesis to see what God had to show us about work and rest in the beginning, before things went so wrong in that garden. And then in the light of the New Testament, how is this still relevant for us today? Well, three short verses that Helen read for us set the scene for the six days of creation, which again you will be very familiar with. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. 
Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, God speaks order out of chaos. Nothing is created apart from God's spoken word. And we're told in John's Gospel, chapter 1, that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made, and without him nothing was made that has been made. Jesus was the Word, and is the Word. And we were told in chapter in verse 2 of Genesis 1 that the Spirit of God was hovering over the deep waters we sang about in that first song. So in the beginning God in all his fullness Father, Son and Holy Spirit created the heavens and the earth and chapters 1 and 2 of Genesis give the details. I have an app on my phone and the big fat book of Nicky Gumbel's Through the Bible in a Year. Some of you will know it. And in his commentary on these verses, he writes something which can be very helpful, I think, because it, this whole chapter and those first few chapters of Genesis can be a bit complicated sometimes. But he says, you are not here by chance. This universe is God's creation. You are made in God's image. Genesis gives an account of the beginning of the universe. It goes way beyond the scientific questions of how and when, and it answers the questions of who and why. Scientific theories do not prove or disprove this explanation. Rather, they are complementary. The Creator God created the universe and everything in it, including human beings, out of love. He turned disorder into restful order and emptiness into full and abundant life. And the Bible tells us what happened on each of the six days of creation with the pinnacle on the sixth day when God created man and woman in his own image to be in relationship with him in unbroken fellowship with their creator. And he saw all that he had made, and it was very good. Well, many people today feel worthless and insecure and of no value. Now, according to God's word, that isn't true. God didn't create rubbish. He looked at those he had created in his image, and he blessed them just as he blessed animal life. And he saw that his whole creation was very good. So why this discrepancy? To quote my friend Jack again, and we keep coming back to him, it all goes back to the garden. We're just moving on now to look at chapter 2 and verses 1 to 3. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. By the seventh day, God had finished the work that he'd been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. And God blessed the seventh day and made it holy. Because on it, he rested from all the work of creating that he'd done. So God worked and he rested. He didn't rest because he was tired. Verse 28 from the Isaiah 40 passage that we're basing this sermon series on, tells us the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the, hem the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary. Now, he didn't rest because he was tired. It was more like he was taking a step back to look at what he'd created and being satisfied with his work. So it became a day of celebration and blessing. The word Sabbath isn't used at all here, but the root of the Hebrew verb for rested is the origin of the noun Sabbath. So we're made in his image. It makes sense 
that if God worked and rested, so should we. Work is meant to be a blessing, and rest is not an optional extra. If we are to function as God created us to function and be in harmony with him and with his created world, it seems logical that we should follow his pattern. But we know that many people today are workaholics, for many people work never stops. Smartphones and technology mean that people can be on call even when they're supposed to be off duty or at home. I used to go swimming in a hotel pool and I was astonished one day, I was swimming up and down, to see in the shallow end there was a man standing in the shallow end on his mobile phone. <laughs> and I know he was probably a really important man, he probably was a surgeon or something, I don't know, but I just thought surely he can leave his phone and just swim. Someone must have brought it to him, I think, but um, it did strike me that nowhere is safe from the technology that we depend on so much these days. And during the pandemic, of course, some people actually found it helpful that they had to stop. And some people reassessed during that time how they were spending their time. And some decided to make long-term changes. But even so, for many, there is often pressure to work longer hours. If we think of the NHS workers <clears throat> and workers on minimum wages and single parents or university students who take extra jobs to try to make ends meet, especially now with the huge cost of living increases. Marcus Rashford brought this very much to light, didn't he? Talking about his mum and how she had to take several jobs in order to feed her family and didn't often eat herself. So busyness and stress can often take over our lives, no matter what stage of life we're at. I, I often think the, the hardest time of life is when you're sort of in your 30s and 40s maybe, when you've got young children but also elderly parents and you're being pulled in both directions then, aren't you? Um, but, but even so, people with young families, they're very busy and, uh, and even retired people uh, often say, don't they, we don't know how we had time to work. So life is busy, whatever stage you're at, it can be. We often seem to have too much to do and our time can get stolen. So what's happened to the balance of work and rest that God modelled? Well, it all goes back to the garden. And of course, we know what happened there in that garden that God had planted in Eden. I was sharing at the first service that Eden is my, was my grandmother's name, so it's a very special name for me. It means delight. And um, God had made a delightful garden for his people to delight in. But God's beautiful, harmonious creation was spoilt by the rebellion of the man and woman he'd created. He had provided everything they needed and also given them the wonderful gift of free choice. And we know they made a very bad choice to disobey God and do their own thing. Unity and harmony, peace with God, with each other, with the animal creation and all the earth, all this was shattered. But still, God came looking for his people. He never stopped loving them. And as the communion prayer says, when we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your son. And this rescue plan, which Jesus fulfills, is hinted at even here in Genesis, if you look at verse, chapter 3 and verse 15. Jesus, our saviour, would come to bridge the chasm that had been opened up by human rebellion and make recreation possible. So going back to the day of rest, there isn't any mention of the formal observation of the Sabbath in the Bible until Exodus chapter 16. And there, you may remember, Moses had 
led the Israelites out of slavery in Egypt. And those people had seen that amazing miracle of the Red Sea parting for them. And it must have been wonderful, uh, a wonderful relief to get away from being slaves in Egypt. <clears throat> but after a month of traveling around the desert towards Sinai, the inevitable happened and the people started to grumble. Why have you brought us into the desert to starve? Would have been better to die in Egypt. At least we had food to eat there. And God provide it for them yet again in all his love and patience he sent down manna the bread of heaven for the people to eat and they were to gather just enough for each day but on the sixth day they were to gather enough for two days because the seventh day was to be a sabbath when they were to rest and this is the first use of the word sabbath in the bible and then, of course, at the formation of the nation of Israel, with the giving of the law, the Ten Commandments, at Sinai, the fourth commandment is, remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labour and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. That's Exodus chapter 20 and verse 8. So the observance of the Sabbath became a distinctive characteristic of the Israelites, helping them to maintain their identity, especially during the troubled time of the exile. But by the time of Jesus, Jewish tradition had added so many additional requirements and restrictions for the keeping of the Sabbath that what God had intended as a blessing had become an intolerable burden. Jesus was challenged on several occasions by the Pharisees about his attitude to the Sabbath. When he was criticized because his disciples had picked corn on the Sabbath, he cut across all those traditions and reminded them of God's purpose in introducing a day of rest for spiritual, mental and physical restoration. A day which God blessed to be a blessing to his people. Jesus replied to the, to the Pharisees, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath and the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Jesus was honouring God's original purpose. And as God who came to earth as man, he had authority to overrule those man-made additions to God's institution. He was in tune with his Father, as always. Jesus' resurrection was on the Jewish first day of the week. And over time, that became the special day for Christians to meet together for worship. A day of rest and celebration and blessing for Christians, often called the Lord's Day. When I was young, Sundays were noticeably different from the other days in the week. Some of you might remember that. Many of you will be too young to remember that. It was quiet everywhere. No shops were open, not many people worked on Sundays, and there wasn't all the sport and other events organized on Sundays. Whether you went to church or not, you knew that Sundays were different. But it's not like that now, is it? To the world, every day is alike. In 1985, there was a campaign called Keep Sunday Special, opposing plans to introduce Sunday trading. It was an alliance of faith groups, trade unions, shopkeepers, and community groups, and they struggled for 20 years to try to protect Sunday as a special day. But eventually, commercial interests won, and we are where we are today. And that makes it harder for Christians 
we can get drawn in by the culture. But actually, Christianity is so often countercultural, isn't it? We do need to stay faithful to God's teaching about our needs. I have a little red mini, which I love. Um, it's very old, it'll be 14 this year, and it's occasionally strange warning lights come on and the clock stops working, and uh, there are strange noises, and I'm not quite sure how to put it right. So I get out the handbook, and I try to find out what the maker advises when these things happen, because the manufacturer will know best how to put those faults right. Well, God is our maker, of course, and when things go wrong, he knows best how to get us back on track, how to put things right. And he's given us the best handbook in the world, in the Bible. A day of rest and celebration and blessing is in the handbook so that life can be lived in balance. If we are to allow God to restore us and renew us so that we can soar on wings like eagles. We do need to wait upon him, to give time to him. And it can be great to go on a parish weekend. Many of us benefit from that. Or spring harvest, which lots of people enjoy and find helpful. Or we can find inspirational talks online, and it's all good. But I think we do need to keep Sunday special, to give God honour and priority on Sundays whenever possible. I know it's not always possible, but to be in fellowship with each other as his people so that we can function well on the other six days. Time to allow him to bless us and renew us by his strength as we gather together so that we can bless and encourage each other and be built up into the strong and effective body of Christ in this place and reach out to other people. It's interesting that as Christians, we rest on the first day of the week, Resurrection Day or Re-Creation Day. And then we work from that place of rest and strengthening. Jesus overcame the events in the garden that my friend Jack was so exercised about so that we can know his resurrection, peace and hope. Now, if we follow God's pattern of work and rest in balance, it will surely help us to, pro to proclaim that peace and hope effectively to the world. So let's pray. Lord, we thank you that you are here, that your spirit is with us. You're here and we know you are moving. We're here and we know you will fill us. Lord, you promise that if we wait on you, you will renew our strength. You've given us a pattern of work and rest. Help us, Lord, to follow your pattern and to keep Sundays, your day, Resurrection Day, special for you. In Jesus' name. Amen. So we're going to take a moment to share peace with one another before we begin our communion prayer together. Jesus Christ is our peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. So let's share the peace with one another. Peace be with you. Thank you.
Peace be with you, Sylvia. Bye. So we begin our communion prayer. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you created all things. Who, ha- who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh as your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin. He lived on earth and went about among us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and put an end to death by dying on the cross for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. But chiefly we are bound to praise you because you raised him gloriously from the dead. For he is the true paschal lamb who was offered for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death and by rising to new life again has restored us to everlasting life. Therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven we proclaim your great and glorious name forever praising you and saying... Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. And he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, 
now and forever. Amen. So just a, s- a reminder about how we're doing communion at the moment. We will, I will dip the wafers into the wine, and uh, so if you come to the front of church to receive, and if you lay your hands out, you'll receive a wafer that's been dipped in the wine. We have non-alcoholic wine available. We also have gluten-free bread, so do please ask if you need either of those options. So draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. Amen. Your endless mind. 
mercy follows me, your goodness will lead me home, and I will trust in you alone, and I will trust of life, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection have delivered us from the power of our enemy. Grant us to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his risen life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And we pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Sorry, Sam, I know you've only just sat down, but we're now going to sing our final song. <laughs> just enough to have a slurp of coffee. We're going to stand uh, to sing our final song together. Able to, would you like to stand? When 
It feels bigger than my faith And struggles steal my breath away When my back's pressed up against the wall With the weight of my worries stacked up tall Strong enough to hold it all And I will cast my cares on you my hope, the only one who's in control, I will cast my cares on you, I'll trade the troubles of this world for your peace inside my soul, this was not what I would have chosen. But you see the future no one knows is And you're still good when I can't See the working of your hands You're holding it all I will cast my cares on you You're the anchor of my hope in control I will cast my cares on you I'll trade the troubles of this world for your peace inside my soul I'm finding this freedom when I lay it all on your shoulders Cast my cares, I will cast my cares on you. Cast my cares, I will cast my cares, I will cast my cares on you. Cast my cares, I will cast my cares, I will. Cast my cares on you. Cast my cares, I will. Cast my cares, I will. Cast my cares on you. I will cast my cares on you. You're the anchor of my hope. You're the one who's in control. I will cast my cares on you I'll trade the troubles of this world For your peace inside my soul I will cast my cares on you You're the anchor of my hope The only one who's in control I will cast my cares on you I'll trade the troubles of this world for your peace inside my soul. Cast my cares, I will. Cast my cares, I will. Cast my cares on you. Cast my cares, I will. Cast my cares, I will. Cast my cares on you. Cast my cares, I will. Cast my cares, I will. Cast my cares on you. Cast my cares, I will. Cast my cares, I will. Cast my cares on you. And so may the peace of Christ, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.
So let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.